All right, guys. So uh, here we are. Lighting's pretty bad, but uh, took the timing belt off. Um, one of the tensioners, either the idler tensioner or the uh, sorry idler pulley or the tensioner, they you know they're just been squeaking a lot, and you know I figured it's good to do. I meant to do this prior to putting the engine in, but I never got around to it. So I'm doing it now. And typically people, they'll also, you can't really see it too well, but they'd change the water pump as well while you have this all off. But that coolant is relatively new and I spent like 50 bucks on coolant and I don't feel like spending another 50 bucks on new coolant. So I'm just going to leave it. So yeah, now we're going to be throwing on these new uh, OEM Nissan RB20 debt tensioners from uh, Nissan Race Shop. If you guys have any parts you need, he carries like a lot of RB parts as well. Just uh, ask for Juan. They're in Fontana, uh, Fontana, California. And uh, yeah, hit him up. Great dude. So I'm gonna get started on doing this, and then uh, I'm not gonna be able to set the timing today. I don't have a timing gun, but we'll just try to get it all together. Here we go. Also, guys, you want to make sure that your timing marks are aligned. Right there on the cam gear, on the other cam gear, and then as well on the crank pulley. I'm not going to bring you guys down there because you can't see anything. But uh, here we go. Alright, so I put the new pulleys on there. Uh, you know, you just want to make sure that you have it going the right way so that it actually provides tension. See the way it, see the way it springs back? But anyway, so grease them up. That's not secured all the way. Now we're just going to throw on the new timing belt. You want to make sure that you put the uh the little uh what's it called? Like the little marking on each designated tooth on the cam gear or on each cam gear as well as the harmonic balancer on the bottom. It is a little tricky to set right, so be careful, make sure they're all where they need to be. Alright guys, so there you have it. The new timing belt is on. Um, hold on, let me get under here. There it is. Right there. It's in the right spot. So uh, look at look at my harmonic balancer here. See what happen when see what happens when you don't use proper tools. I use like a regular pulley puller ish with like the three claws, and uh, you're supposed to use a harmonic balancer. And now mine is totally screwed up, and this is like a four hundred dollar part to replace. Sick. All right, so I just finished putting everything back together. Um, I put the uh, the cam angle sensor just kind of basically where it was. I don't have a timing gun, so I'm not gonna be able to set the timing. Currently I have the fan off because if one of these belts do squeak, I want to be able to quickly, uh, you know, put some, put some of this uh, stuff on there. So yeah, here it goes. Hopefully I don't blow this shit up. All right, what's up, guys? So just a little update on the 240. Finally, I have my uh, AFR set up and my boost gauge is installed. Well, it's been installed, but it stopped working for a while. Turns out that there was a kink in the line. Hopefully you guys are able to hear me. I just had the fans on. Not the radiator fans, but the, uh, the cabin fans, but anyway. So, a few other things I did aside from install my AFR. Excuse me while I get out of the car here. I actually had my, uh, I had my exhaust bung welded on. Hold on a sec. Holding the hood up with my forehead right now. Ow. Anyway, but uh, over here, along with my AFR, I also have this little uh, ISR boost controller set up. I didn't have the I don't have the mount set up for it right now. So currently, it's just kind of tucked underneath the bracket for my uh, catch can. But Basically right now the car, I want it to be on 14 pounds and it's really annoying to work this because you see how it says positive to add boost, you spin it to the right or clockwise. 
it's actually the other way around. So the first time I put this on the car, I had it set up so that I thought it wouldn't make any boost at all. It would just be like stock boost and I'd work my way up from there. Turns out it was fully open and I went above like 20 PSI, got total like compressor surge and I even hit boost cut and it was just, it was just bad, like it was scary. So then immediately I turned it down and I'm like, why the hell is this thing not working? And I turn it the other way and um, you know, and that's when the boost started to, uh, you know, be restricted by the little controller there. <laughs> it's really annoying because there are a bunch of different little clicks in here. It's kind of hard to show you with one hand because I'm holding the camera. But basically, the controller only, or from what I've read, it only controls 10 PSI. So you can only add 10 PSI to whatever your stock wastegate pressure is. And so to find like the proper um, PSI within such a large range of clicks, it's really annoying. Like I've, I've, I'm pretty close to it now. I got to back it off just like one click because I'm spiking like 16, 15. So hopefully it'll be set at 14. I had it at 12 before, but then I brought it another up two clicks. So <sighs> yep. And also guys, I wouldn't have done that if I didn't have my AFR installed. I've been keeping track of my my AFR. Because basically, you know, if it just started running lean on boost, you know, if I was running, say, on boost, like 14, which it was at one point, I just went over to my fuel pressure regulator, took off the vacuum line here, this little one, and then you screw this out and it actually increases the pressure. The pressure right now, um, without vacuum, I think it's probably like 48 PSI, 47 PSI. And I found that amount of fuel pressure works well for the amount of boost that I'm running right now. It's, uh, I think in boost, I think the AFRs are like high 12s, low 13s, which is still, you know, I heard it's kind of lean. You don't want it to be anything past like 13.5, I think. I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Um, so yeah. Anyway, the uh, exterior of the car is still, still the same. I haven't lowered it or anything yet. It's all dirty right now. Ugh. I actually want to pressure wash the wheels so that I get down to the original white under there. And actually, I'm pretty proud of myself that I haven't curbed these at all yet. Knock on wood. <clears throat> yeah, like right here, you can see the white underneath. But yep, yeah, overall, very happy with how the car is running right now. Uh, also, the EBC brakes that I threw in all around, they're noticeably better than stock, like way noticeably better. Like if I'm speeding on the highway, not that I do speed on the highway, but um, you know, the car just stops with like much more control now. Like I don't get as scared like when I need to apply the brake because I know that the car is gonna actually slow down pretty quick. <clears throat> oh yeah, also, I wish I caught this on film, but my HKS like mushroom intake, the whole filter just popped off of the, the rim along here. So I had to drive it like that for maybe a day, just a few hours. And then I went to AutoZone, and then this is the only three inch filter they had. So I just have like some crummy Spectre filter on there. When it's warm, it usually idles around 15, 16. Yeah, like once the idle drops, that's where it is. But the idle is still kind of high right now. I don't know why it is, I just started it up but I was running it earlier, so it's not really like a cold start, but um, also I plan on getting a, uh, a three and three eighths tack, just so I can put it right here, right in front of the original tack. And then I'm going to uh, put the KA speed sensor in my RB trans, cause I, I didn't even know that you could do that prior to me selling my KA. I wouldn't have sold my KA if uh, I had known that, or I wouldn't have sold it without pulling the speed sensor off. Look over there, there's my motorcycle. 
So a few of my really early subscribers might remember like when I used to post BMX videos. But basically here's my BMX bike and I ordered these obnoxiously tall 24 inch rise like chopper bars for it. And I just want to see what it looks like with them on. So I'm going to throw them on just kind of for shits and giggles. Okay, so I think the bars I ordered were a little too tall. Oh my god. <laughs> this thing is going to be impossible to ride. I can barely fit it in the frame without being like 20 feet away. This is nuts. I feel like literally if there's any impact, these things are just going to snap right off. I work at a bike shop, so I got these for $9 rather than whatever MSRP they were. I think they were like 30 bucks MSRP. But I don't know, I just thought it was entertaining and they'd, I thought it'd be kind of like a joke, so let's see how it rides. <laughs> 